Hello, everybody, wherever you may be. My name is Larry. My call signs Kilo 7 Hotel November. I would like to welcome you back to my shack here in the Pacific Northwest. This is a very special edition. Ham Radio Live, show 75. This is a big one, folks. I mean, a big one. Listen to, to listen to the folks in Mississippi are ready to come back on the show. I'm telling you. MFJ, Ameritron, Cushcraft, uh, High Gain, uh, Vectronics, Mirage, you name it, they do it. Let's meet them. This is, first of all, Richard Stubbs, live from MFJ in Mississippi. Richard Welcome to the show. And we've got you muted now. Person. You weren't muted before, but now you're muted. Now I've got you. Welcome to the show, buddy. Well, well, I'm glad to see you, Larry. We've been talking on email forever. It's good to see you in person. You're you're a lovely guy. Oh, man. You just you make my day. And not, not only that, <laughs> you're really good at not telling the truth, too. Bless your heart. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Hey, you're a good that's man. That's part of the job, right? You're a good man. You're a good man. How long have you been a ham radio operator, Richard? I have been at MFJ since 1994, 25 years and counting, I guess. And then my ham license I got in 94, I believe. But I have, believe it or not, be be quiet. Don't tell nobody. It's expired by accident. Uh Uh, Uh-oh. About 10 years after I got it. For some reason, me and some of the other guys that got it, uh, got too busy and going to ham fest and just forgot all about it. So I've got to go back and get it again. So, you know, speaking of ham fest, ham fest, I just finished, we just finished with Eric Schwartz, one of the founders of Elecraft. And he said, I've met Richard and Dayton and, you know, seen him a bunch of times. He wanted to make sure and tell you hello, by the way, Eric. Yeah, Eric and Eric and I had some business dealings in the past. They had some, they bought some antennas from us and stuff like that. And yeah, he's a great guy. Awesome. Awesome gentleman. Fantastic yeah. ambassador of ham radio like you are. Oh, you're, you're very kind. You know, you're making my head big. It's going to be hard to get out of the house soon. So bless your heart, Richard. We'd like but- to... Tell the folks that are watching first, please subscribe to the channel. We don't, we do not put any sort of ads here. We won't. I'm not going to monetize this channel. It's to give back to folks in ham radio to teach you ham radio or to help you improve your shack. This gentleman here, this is the guy that can help do this, the latter. He's going to help you improve your shack from antenna tuners to amplifiers to noise cancelers to whatever you need in your shack to make it better. Richard's the guy. Richard, you talked about stuff coming out that you're really excited about. Would you want to share some stuff with us? Well, I'm going to let Jared do most of that, and I'm going to be in here to hand him off the stuff. Okay. But you know, I mainly wanted to just be here for any customer service type deals or talk about love of ham fest or, uh, you know, I promote the thing. This is my catalog, but we haven't even printed a new catalog yet this year, uh, Larry, because there's no place to hand them out, right? Yep. So uh, we already got canceled for 2021 uh, Orlando Hamvention. Oh, man. Jackson, Mississippi canceled. And also uh, state uh, Louisiana Ham Fest I used to go to where they have crawfish on Friday night. Have you ever oh. eaten crawfish, Larry? Yes, sir. Oh, that's heaven right there. Fantastic. Yes. Oh. Uh, they always did that on a Friday night. And it was a great little show, and, and we always did real well there. So that was one of them that also got canceled. So now we're looking for Dayton to see what the answer is there. And I'm, I know there's a lot of guys listening and that are going to be listening that are out there that want to have a Dayton, and I hope, I sure hope we do because I miss the road. Uh, my wife doesn't miss the road, but I miss <laughs> the road. Uh, I like getting on the road and talking to people face to face and selling them stuff. And like you said, helping them, helping them with their shack. So yeah, yeah. It's, been a, it's been a great journey. Mr. Jew told me when I first started, he said, where you want to go on a journey? Except he said it like, Hey Richard, you want to go on a journey? <laughs> he's, a, he's a Southern gentleman. Yes. Yep. I, but, I yeah, told I, you before I've been to Mississippi only once. And the thing that I love about Mississippi is the just the it has a very special charm to it. It's got just that old fashioned respect and kindness. Something about the state of Mississippi, if you've never been, you need to go. It really is a very special place. I'd like to welcome Delta Kilo Five, Oscar November Victor. Gunter from Germany is in the house. Uh, welcome, Gunter. My home man, my birthplace. Is that right? 
was yeah, born right. in Munich. Yeah, I'm an I'm an army brat. Well, there you go. Well, now hold yeah. on, Wiesbaden. Uh, ich baden ein Bier, bitte. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, that, no, Frankfurt. Gunter is in Wiesbaden. That's what I was asking. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, yeah. I was I was born in Munich, okay. and I graduated high school in Frankfurt. I went back twice. My dad wow. did two two different tours over there. Yeah. And Veterans Day it was, was it yesterday. Was joy, let me wow. tell you. Well, you know what? That's cool. Give your dad our very best, please. You know, we honor all military folks here because that's just such a sacrifice, and it's a tough job. I mean, did you also go to the military as well? I did not. My dad talked me out of it. God rest. He's, he's rest oh, in peace. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, he was a Vietnam veteran, and, you know, a lot of, a lot of the older guys in the Army now with that Agent Orange, it's killing them later in life because yeah. their lung capacity they breathe that stuff and they didn't know it. And, uh, yeah, he died at 67. It was about 10 years ago. Mm. Uh, That's, yeah, I'm but, sorry, man. It was, a, it was a great loss, but you know, I think about him all the time, of course, like I every, bet. like every son does for, when they have a, a dad loss. So for I sure. Bet. Yeah. We were live with Richard Stubbs from MFJ. MFJ is not just MFJ. It's also things like Ameritron, Cushcraft, and, you know, of course, high gain antennas, you know, they've got Vectronix, they've got Mirage. If you want to talk with Richard, ask him some questions, please do so in the comments section. Richard will be there to answer your questions to help you get your ham shack shining clean and the best it can be. So Anders, welcome. Anders, all the way, I believe, from uh, Norway, I believe. Welcome Norway. to the show. Wow. We're, We're glad to have you. Yep, a lot of folks here. So Richard, New hams, we we really try and cater to people who are trying to get their license, you know, work their way up. So what would you recommend to somebody that's just starting out, you know, they get their first radio and they realize, okay, 100 watts is pretty cool, but maybe I'd like to try a different antenna, you know, work out from that dipole or something. Maybe they don't yet have an antenna. Someone starting out, what would you recommend maybe as a good start? For radio, well, it's been really, really effective, Larry, for uh, new guys that don't have a lot of room and they don't have access to put up a big vertical or a big beam. Are these little infets that you can pack up in your backpack and take with you? Uh, we got the uh, the low power version, the 300 watt version, and an 800 watt version, and then you've got one that goes from 80 to six, and then you've got one that goes 40 through six. And those are so popular. We're so far behind on them right now, but they're very economical and they work, uh, which has been done by a lot of other YouTubers. And I'm surprised I haven't sent you one yet. You need to try it out in the field. It's really awesome. And I'll put that in next time. But yeah, that's a, that's a very effective antenna. Of course, the G5RV Junior yes. at 52 feet. You, you used a G5RV. Um, there's also the off-center fed dipoles, yeah. which are very effective for 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters. And they're, uh, what is that, 66 feet, Jerry, right? Yeah, 66 feet, which still is a, a little bit of room. And then, of course, you know, some guys are in apartments and condos, so we've got apartment antennas. You've got these antennas that you stick out the window and you clip up the coil. They're all inexpensive. The MFJ antennas, for a starter, you know, any rare range from like seventy nine ninety five to one hundred and fifty. So it's not like you have to break the bank to uh, to get a nice antenna that'll work. Yes. And now with the the little tuners also, you know, that's what we're primarily known for, as you know. Yep. You got your father in law that nine three nine Y. Yep. And uh, that's a that's a steal at. I that think thing it's is a seventy nine ninety five. That's two hundred watts. That's a bargain. I mean that that yeah. stinking thing is so fast. Now I have a nine nine eight, and yeah, that nine three nine that nine three nine is like the Roadrunner, and nothing gets the nine nine eight. I love it. I won't sell it forever. In fact, it's the only thing I kept when I sold everything to buy the one hundred one. But that nine three nine Y is so fast. I mean, it literally zip boom done, and you're yeah. there. And you got. 20,000 memories, you got two year warranty on the product, and it gives you the interface cable for your modern rig. So that's a, it's a steal. Absolutely. Like that's what I thought too. I was like, well, that's all it costs? It's 200 yeah. watts. You know, so that's. That and an infed. You know, yeah. think about this too. Folks, it might that be. That and an infed antenna. Yeah. And a absolutely. small radio. 
Back Absolutely. Back. You guys are going to run maybe a, a Yesu 1000 MP with 200 watts, maybe a 2000, a 5000 that's running 200 watts. Maybe you're running a Kenwood 480HX, 200 watts. All of mm -hmm. those radios, the Yesu 101 MP, 200 watts. That 939 yeah. can handle all that power and get you on pretty much anything that you can put a wire on in the snap of a finger. I swear and it's the fastest so antenna. Now there we are, the digital modes. And of course, that tuner still handles the full power output on digital, Yeah, which a lot of people don't realize. So yeah, uh, it's an incredible buy at that price. And oh, no joke. Fantastic. Got yeah, a question here. Guys, uh, I've, I've talked, talked to a lot of guys over the years. They, they don't even have a, an ability to set up a station in their apartment or their condo. And they operate in a car when it's not too cold. Like in your country, you yeah. know, it's not ever get too cold. You can sit in the car for a little while. Speak for and yourself. you can put your station out in the car. Or you yep. can take it in the backpack and take it out to the park. You know, yep. that's the fun part of it. Yep, he got a question here. This is coming from Anders, and Anders, I believe, is in Sweden. No, Norway, excuse me. Sirius vertical DX antenna for 20 meters and one for 40 meter DX. What can I get that I can run 1,000 plus watts? Wow. Well, first of all, Mr. Ju has a um, high gain uh, uh, AB680 on the side of our building. Which, which is the one that you have, and yep. you've talked so highly about. Yep. Now, Love that's, it. More bands, that's more bands than you may want. Uh, for 20 meters, we've got lots of options there, but there's a 17, uh, let me, you know, I'm getting too old. Yeah. Now. I can't even that's okay. While you're getting that, Richard, let me just say to Anders, you know, this vertical that I have, which is the MFJ9, I'm sorry, the high gain AV680 vertical, it's only 27 feet long. It will do from... 80 all the way to six and i mean it's not hard to build i mean my thing is i'm disabled so it's hard for me to build things quick but we just put it on one of the foldable mass bases you know and you know set it up on a 15 foot ladder to kind of support it pushed it up it's up at 33 feet and that thing has worked me all the way from brazil into indonesia it is an amazing vertical antenna really is go ahead richard Larry, most vertical antennas, they don't cover just one band. So you're looking at, like, the 1793 is kind of a specialized antenna. It's, uh, uh, it's uh, a full-size 20 meter. So you get that full-size 20 meter DX capability on the vertical, but it also covers 80, 40, and 20. So you get more than, than you bargained for. It's tall. It's like 33 feet tall, but it's it's made out of that aircraft aluminum that we're famous for. Yep. It's very lightweight, and that, that's what the AB680 is made out of. So when I talk to a guy like Anders, I would say, if you've got the room, why not put the AB680 out? That's the performer that Mr. Jew hangs on. You know, the R9 on the Kush draft is a little higher, but he went for the medium area, and they work. They work really well. I can say nothing but good things about the high-gain AV680 vertical. It is amazing. Anders says, can you please write the name in the chat? I can. Yes, we'll add that to it, so I'll make sure you have it. Richard, um, I'm looking for other questions. So, folks, if you have questions for Richard, Richard can answer your questions regarding MFJ products. So that's like your antenna tuners, things like that. He can answer questions regarding high-gain and you know, uh, Kushcraft, if you're interested in antenna products, MFJ also makes antenna products, okay? He can also answer your questions about amplifiers. Yeah, think about that. Want something that's maybe got tubes in it? Ameritron. They also sell solid state. If you're looking for something to get you a little more power, here's your chance to ask the man that can do the job. Richard Stubbs from MFJ, all the way in Mississippi, joining us, my goodness gracious. Richard, I got, I'm bare, Larry, I'm barefooted and I got mud between my toes. <laughs> hey, I wanted to mention uh, to Anders too. You know, there's also this famous 1796 antenna that we have that's been around 25 years as long as before me, and it's a six band, no radios vertical. It's only 12 feet tall, 24 foot, I mean 24 inch footprint. So you got nothing in this, but 40 through six meters. Wow. An incredible buy. Yeah. Wow. That, that's a famous, it's been around, we still ship them all over the world. So, 
I'm just typing in this here for, for Anders so he can see what we're talking about for that vertical antenna. And, and again, I highly recommend this one. It's just because, you know, I've had good luck with it. It's really good. This is the high gain AV680 vertical, 27 feet long. It does, I believe it's eight bands. Let's see. It says eight. it'll do 80 or 75. You can use a tuner to use the other side of it if you want to, but you've got 80, you've got 60, you got 40, 30, 20, 10, sorry, 20, 15, 17, 10, and 6, 9 bands. 9 Incredible. band vertical antenna. That right there is a winner. I have done nothing but good things. In fact, I'll be honest, it's my only antenna. I have the new MFJ 1848, which is a phenomenal X. This hex beam is amazing, by the way. When you get this thing up in the air, you not only get 20, but you also get 40. Now, you've seen probably tons of reviews out there on the 1846. This is the same product, except it's got longer legs. So think about adding 30 and 40 to it. Now you've got your nighttime DX and your daytime DX on one hex beam. But the kicker is you can do it with a quality rotator. Put it on to an adjustable mast, for goodness sakes. You'll still be into it under 1500 bucks For a directional, a directional that gives you 40 and 20, that's a steal. It really is. It's so That's lightweight, amazing. Larry. You probably carried it in on your head rather than putting it on your shoulder, right? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I hey, wish. so uh, when I first started working for Mr. Jew, he, he told me, he said, every ham's got a budget. And so that's why people always want to know why we got this product at ten dollars and this product at twenty dollars and this product at thirty dollars. He said everybody's got a budget, so we've got an antenna for all aspects of ham radio. Whether you're in an apartment, whether you're in a condo, a mobile, uh, and then on the tuners, you got a tuner that steps up in every budget. You've got one with meters. You got one without meters. You got one that's legal limit. You got one that's three hundred watts, and so on. So that's that's always been his philosophy: is that he wanted to cover everybody for everything. I'll be honest. I think that this new eighteen forty eight is a game changer. It really is. It changes everything. And the reason why is you get forty. You get forty now with twenty. You can you get those two bookends the nighttime DX, the daytime DX, and now you can steer the signal. That is a real big deal. So, uh, folks, again, you, again, with a quality rotator, I'm not talking about going down, getting yourself a cheap rotator at your local television or, you know, ham radio store. I'm talking about buying a good rotator. For example, if you buy the high gain CD 45 double I, Okay, that is a quality rotator. It gives you a meter that tells you which direction it's turning. It will turn that antenna fairly quickly, but has enough of a thrust bearing in it to stop it in high wind. This is under 1500 bucks. You put it on your roof if you don't have a big backyard. That's what I'm doing. You know, people in my neighborhood probably gonna think I'm talking to space, which is cool. But, you know, I don't I don't really care. But the point is, it's legal. As long as you get it up, like with any antenna, vertical, dipole, directional, get it up high enough, as high as you can, because that's going to help you work better. That's just the way it works. Delta Kilo 5, Oscar November Victor says, I like the MFJ 998 RT remote antenna tuner. Many hams in Germany running that one. Wow. Yeah, I noticed that uh, DX Engineering was selling that as like a package with their 43-foot vertical that they sell. And they, they're selling the, the antenna tuner along with it, and it's been a big, big ordeal for them. That CD45 is under 500 bucks. Of course, street price is always going to be lower than what we are. We, we sell through dealers, and so we do sell direct, but we like to, to let the dealers discount because... We're not trying to compete with HRO. That'd be crazy, first of all. And uh, Gigaparts and DX Engineering and RNL Electronics and everybody out there, we want those guys to make money. And we'll take the little gravy if somebody wants to give it to us. Sure. And, and hey, uh, Larry, I saw where uh, Seaside is still on so far for this year. Yes. 
I'm hoping that I get to fly back out there and work with that ham radio outlet again. That Those guys nice. from uh, Portland are really, really good guys over there. Yeah, and uh, yeah. looking forward to that if it happens again. So we're yeah. going to hope and wish that 2021 is the year of the ham fest again. Boy, no, I know Jared and, and me have been sick about it. So yeah. I'm going to let Jared come over here and sit in this chair, and I'm going to hand him some product. Oh, you got a question? Yes, yeah, yeah, we've got a few yeah. people here, okay? We've got some stuff for you. First well, of all, Jody, you welcome to the show. Please. Kilo Bravo for Oscar Victor Papa. Hi from Tampa, Florida. Anders says, if you compare a magnetic loop antenna and a vertical antenna, it is a big difference if you like DX. Yes, mag loops do an amazing job of RX. There's no comparison. Those, those loops, Larry, if you put them outside and put them up at a, at a good height and, and point them and steer them, they're, they're just like a beam antenna. That's I mean, right. It's, it's an incredible aspect. Jared's built some uh, box fan loops for us. We won't have that to show because it's, it's in a pretty big box, but he's added 40 meters on that. And those are those have been announced on the MFJ website. But we've also got, I don't know how many we got in here, Jared. What is it, about 12 products to show? Can, Can we, we show, show that? Anything on here? I've got. I do want to do that, but we got some people with tons of questions. Let me get those. Okay, let's do the questions. Okay, yes, Alpha <clears throat> Echo One Tango Papa. This comes from Bahrain. Hi, Richard. Can you speak about the ALS 500 amplifier and the variants? Also, if you have time, the 1306. So we're talking amplifiers here, folks. Well, the 500M is obviously a mobile amplifier. I mean, it does take 80 amps to run it. So it's, uh, it's built to be really short and thin and, and to fit in your car or your truck or whatever. Put it in the trunk. The, the, what do you say, the 1306? Uh, yeah, he says the ALS 500 amplifier and its variants. So obviously the ALS 600, okay? Okay, and the ALS 600 is the base station amplifier. It comes with the power supply. The, the 500M does not. They were relying on you to hook that up with your car and uh, arrange that power yourself. But the 600 comes with the power supply. The 606 then adds six meters and automatic band switching, and it also comes with the power supply. And then we step up to the 1200 watt models, the 1300, which uh, has uh, it does not have six. The 1306 added the six and the automatic band switching. And so that's why there's about a $400 price difference there. But solid state, hey man, no warm up, no tubes to worry about. Turn it on, switch the bands, you know, just just go. Now, on the 1306, uh, Richard, that's something also that automatically switches bands with you, which is great. Does it require an additional power supply? With that one also. All well, I'm the, sorry, we, we, we lost, hold on a second, buddy. We, we just had a feed that just kind of cut for a second. Could you repeat what you said? Does oh. it come with a power supply or is, yeah, does it need the, one? Okay, yeah, all of the Ameritron... Solid state amps, except for the 500 and the mobile, come with a power supply. Perfect. Comes with a mating power supply. You can either have a switching power supply or a regulated, you know, transformer type power supply. Yep, get the. But most here. people are choosing yep. the lightweight guys nowadays Those because the, the hash is no longer there. That, yep. That's all been cleaned. Up. These guys the are doing this. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, the switching, the switching power, power, I'm sorry, man, I'm doing this again to you, don't mean to. I just want to make a point to the people who are new. Switching power supplies have grown tremendously in popularity. They don't have the hash issue, the noise issue they used to have because they're choked really well. So a linear is heavier. It's just the way it works. But for people who want to work DX, they still will think, hey, there's not as much hash because it's not a switcher. You know, either way, I think you got a quality product there. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Just trying to help people who might not understand about the power supply and an amplifier. Well, it's like the big difference between the AL 1500, you know, the big, big boy monster, 76 pounds. Whereas I think the AL, you know, by, you know with both pieces. The 18, that's right, the 1306 at, is how much in weight? Uh, I can get the exact amount, no, but not I think exact. it's about 32 pounds. 32, both of them, all right, perfect. Both the power supply and the amp. There you so, go. you know, but the 1500 also is a beast. You know, you turn it on 65 seconds, you're ready to go, and you got 2200 watts or something. We, we only spec it at 15, but, you know, it's really going to do more than that. There you go. There you go. Well, last question. Anders Kyle, and why is it 
only low watt in this magnetic loop, 150 watts. He's talking about the 1788 here. So why is, why is he figuring that it's only a low watt transmit? The charger is what? On, what? on a mag loop, the 150 watts. The no, the, the, the actual mag loop. The, the, yeah, he's, uh, I think what he's asking, Richard, is he wants to know, uh, is there anything that's in a loop that can go more than 150? Yeah, why we can't have more power. Now, Jared just built some box fan loops that will handle more power. Uh, but you're still limited uh, because, well, you just are. You can't. Uh, the voltage across the butterfly. The voltage across the butterfly capacitor is what Jared's telling me. So. 100 watts, you're at 10 to 20 kilovolts already. Yeah, at 100 watts, he says 10 to 20 kilovolts already. Yeah. So that's, that's, the, that's the limiting factor on loop antennas. Uh, can we make a bigger. Batter boy, uh, probably, but it's going to have to be, man, it's going to have to be really beefy, right? And pricey. Yes. Yeah. We're, we're, we're more about, you know, having the price down as low as it can possibly be. But, you know, and then again, we have Ameritron and High Gain and Fish Grab that have some high price uh, products on there, but they're, they're, they're built like that. And uh, not, not to say that the MFJ is not, it's just that it's a different process. Gotcha. Okay. We're live with Richard Stubbs from MFJ and Ameritron and Cushcraft and Victronics and, and, and. These guys have so many companies, like a giant umbrella with a whole bunch of stuff hanging over. Bear with me. My dog groomer is trying to reach me because saying, hey, the dogs are done, but, you know, hey, there you go. So we will just have to decline that phone call, and uh, I'll take care of my, make sure my brother calls. I'm sorry about oh, that. Oh, they got groomed, huh? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're being groomed while Dad's doing interviews. So, Richard, if you want to go ahead and switch over to Jared, that's fine. If it's good for you to segue over to him now. Yes, I'm sorry got, for the phone little, calls, folks. Larry, we got a lot of new stuff that we really are excited about and we want to show, and, and some of them are already being sold. So, Perfect. Uh, yeah, Let's let hear about Jared it. In. I'm going to let him sit in the seat, and I'll hand him and offer some products. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Turn the laptop around. <laughs> Look at this. This is Jared, and Jared is with MFJ as well. He's one of the guys who does the heavy lifting. Now, now Richard, Richard's pretty studly dude. He, he helps with sales and all this stuff. This is Jared Marsh. His call sign is Alpha Echo... What's your, what is it? I'm sorry. I've got part of it, but Alpha Echo 5 Lima Golf. There we go. Alpha Echo 5 Lima Golf. So he's going to talk to us now about some products that are coming. And boy, how excited are we? Go ahead, Jared. Take it away. All right. Let me get this turn around. So you can see what I'm seeing. Okay. He's okay. going to turn the camera around so we can get a chance to see what he's seeing. Um, and I appreciate you guys being patient here. Sorry about the, the, the phone call there. It's uh, the, the dogs are supposed to take three hours. It's now two, so that's pretty close. And, uh, hey, there you go. Welcome, welcome to the show, Jared. Thanks, buddy. All right, so let's start with this little product. Um. This, as, as you, you can, can tell, tell, it's very, very much still in the prototype phase. It doesn't even have a box yet. And at the bottom, we have a Raspberry Pi 4. Sitting on top of it, though, we have two what we're calling 1270 Pis. So that is the um, old Coastal Chipworks TNC Pi that we are now manufacturing. Wow. And at the very top, this red board is a prototype sound card interface. So think of it like an MFJ-1204 that connects directly to a Raspberry Pi. Wow. So you would be able to drive all of your HF digital loads from, um, from that one board. That's fantastic, man. Holy cow. So how many Raspberry Pis can you run through that? Well, it's, well, it's a single Raspberry Pi, Pi but I'm, I'm, we're, we're stacking, stacking expansion boards on top of the GPIO. Gotcha, brother. Sorry about that. I, I'm literally... <laughs> this is, if you could see what I'm going through right here. That's a really neat product. When do you think that might release, by the way? Where, how close are you guys to getting that done? 
Well, but the 1270 pies are already launched. These green boards at the bottom, these are actual production boards, and you can go online and buy those right now. The red board, it's the first prototype, so give me a bit. Got to iron out all the kinks. There's always going to be something that happens with a prototype. Yeah, absolutely, but this is something that's cutting edge, man. Uh, that's fantastic. Look at this, my guys. Look at this, everybody. That is some sweet stuff. So how long have you been developing this, Jared? A uh, couple of weeks now for the red board. Wow. That's amazing. I think that's amazing. Sorry, guys. You know, I literally, I think what's happening is I think my dog groomer is trying to call me to tell me that the dogs are done. And I'm in the middle of a second YouTube video. I thought it'd be three hours, but uh, I'm not sure what they're doing, Colin. So I, I will, I'm trying to literally handle two things at one time. I'm going to stick with just YouTube right now, which is where we're at. And I'll call them when I'm done. Okay. So I apologize for a little bit of, you know, what the heck was going on there. That's what was going on there. All right. So now we're looking at the MFJ 1204B. And we now we're back. back. <laughs> Sorry, I'm swapping back real quick. Okay. The idea behind this particular stack, for those of you that do WinLink and things like it, mm -hmm. with two TNCs and a sound card interface, you can drive an HF WinLink station, a VHF WinLink station, and a VHF APRS station off of a single Raspberry Pi. <laughs> In fact, um, I already have the software somewhat configured and in the next month or so, I'm going to go try and throw this thing out somewhere around Starfield and see what happens. Awesome. Wow. That's fantastic, Jared. That's great. We got a question real quick for you guys. Question coming from Scandinavia. But here is, can MFJ make a mag loop that if you want like 400 Watts of peak envelope power, um, any idea on, you know, if that can first of all be done, because I know you're not making those with 400 watts of power. Again, the issue really happens with these is because as the variable capacitor in it, you start running more power, you end up getting arcing in those in those variable capacitor fins. Um, do you think, Jared, that's something that's possible to do down the road? I mean, it is certainly possible to build such a thing. Again, the issue is going to be the uh, voltage across that butterfly capacitor. You got to remember, we specifically designed our butterfly capacitors because it is so hard to find an air variable capacitor that can handle 10 to 20 kilovolts. Yep. So I'm not saying something like that could never happen because, I mean, it certainly could. It's just, again, as you increase your power with these short magnetic loops, your your voltage across that capacitor gets really, really high. Yep. Yeah. So, and then that's just, if they start arcing, they're not going to do any good. There you go. So there's Jared with uh, MFJ, and that's a great question, Anders. And I think a lot of folks would like that, especially the folks who are space restricted, because they'd like to run more power, but they don't have the room to do it. And I think Anders, what, what Anders says is really good because he just wants to run some more power to be able to try and make better QSOs. That makes sense. Totally. Okay, Jared, you've got the MFJ 1204B here. Talk to us about that. All right. So I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the MFJ 1204, the, um, our original sound card interface for digital modes. Yep. Um, it had a white had a USB cable dangling out the back. <clears throat> but what I've done over the past three or four weeks is to relay out that board using some updated components and with our surface mount machine. Oh, so now we have a sound card box look at that. that only needs a standard Oh my goodness. You got a, a USB C there. And then you've right. got a couple quarter inch jacks for your auxiliary in and out. And look at that. There's an Ethernet cable for your rig. Wow. All right. So this uses the same jumper boards and the same cables as the original 1204, but now, <clears throat> excuse me, everything's laid out on a single board. It's um, <clears throat> it's quieter than the original, and quieter in the sense that you're not having 
so much, you're not generating internal noise that can get in your signal. And um, it's a lot easier to make. That's the fantastic. The whole thing is now almost entirely service now. How long did you take working on that? This is your project, right? It's one of the things I've been working on. Um, he's not in here, but the other engineer, Ben, started working on it months ago, but he got tied up working on some other things, so I took it from him and finished it off. And those are actually about to go in production. We're waiting on a few things to come in, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks we can get them listed on the website for you. Jared, congratulations on accomplishing something pretty cool there. That's cool. Okay, now we're looking at a new product. This is something for being able to switch antennas. Talk about this. I love this. Here's why. I love this because so many antenna switches, first of all, are huge and they're heavy. But second of all, this seems to be pretty easy to adjust them, you know, to move from one antenna to the other to the other. Talk about what we're seeing here. Okay, okay, so, so what, what you see in here is, if you're familiar with the Ameritron RCS4, it's very similar to that. The biggest changes are that we have shrunk the form factor. So I don't know if you can, you can see the size of my thumb on this control box. Wow. You can see the whole thing fits in. I'll go with one for now. Um, the whole thing. Your hand. Yeah, the whole thing fits in the palm of my hand. Um, you're not reading that label wrong. It's um, 12 volts VC. Okay, so you got 12 volts no, no, no. AC, and you've got the ground right in front. Boy, I could see a yeah. lot of use for that. That's a small box. Right, so the power supply is a little weird. You have to have a 12 volt AC power supply, which of course we will ship with it. Sure. Um, if you use a regular DC power supply, you're only going to get the first three antenna positions. Okay. Um, I didn't bring the power supply in here, but, um, so this side connects to your radio, this side here outputs to that switch this box. box. So how much power can that handle? Legal limit. 1500 watts. Look at that. Holy cow. Now, okay. For Canadians, if they're running 2k, can it do 2k? I cooked it at Ameritron using... An old AL 1500. <laughs> okay, it's good. It's good. Okay. <laughs> and had no problem. It is, it is officially listed as 1500 watts, but it was tested on an AL 1500. Wow, that's great. Look at this. Oh, hey, 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 hey. I need that. Look at this. Look at this. Talk All about right. this 1146. Wow. So basically, we took the um, DC filter unit. I forget the number of what, the, what that was. 1126. 1126. We took the filter module out of that and expanded the other side of it into Anderson power poles and binding post. Wow. And then integrate, added some LEDs. I should have brought up a good little power supply. Look at uh, how easy that is to hook up. Look at one of my, uh, one of the little switching ones in my office. Okay. I love anyway. this because you can power your DC stuff and look at how easy it is if you pop a fuse. That is so simple. Holy right. and crud, man. This is if brilliant. The L, if the LED goes bad, that tells you the fuse blew. Yeah. So if your LED goes out, you automatically know which fuse is dead. And you've got a you've got a 40 amp fuse the top left that basically you know that runs the system makes sure that it works. If that one goes out, obviously you know you've blown the 40 amp. But yeah, every, each one of those is going to show. Hey, if you've popped one, you went a little too heavy on the amperage. Wow, this is nice. It's basically a metering system to make sure that all your gear is running properly and it doesn't pop your circuit breaker downstairs. Is that what the purpose is? That That's the purpose of the fuses. The uh, other purpose is for those of us that have power distribution systems that are non-ideal in our living quarters. It's a DC, it's a, it filters out um, RF noise in your DC. It's nice. Sorry, may, that may not have come out clearly, but um, it's, it's, a DC, it's, it's an RF filter as well as a power distribution box. 
look at that. So, you know, if you've got RF issues coming from something that's nearby, you know, then it's getting on your cables, you know, your power cables, whatever. It'll help filter it out. But also, if you're maybe running a little bit too much, say, you know, for your power supply and your amps are going up too high from where you're running your rigs, it's going to protect you. That is a great idea, Jared. Wow. Great right. idea. One moment. We're going to have dun, that dun, dun. See, I want to have some music and like a dun dun dun, dun for this here because it's kind of cool because you see the empty workbench. This is the brain center right here of MFJ. It's where a lot of things are designed, folks. This is an inside look at the largest ham radio supplier in the world. This is an inside peek. What a joy and honor. Thanks, guys. All right. Larry, Jerry's been working with us, what is it, a year now? No, no. Not even a year yet. He's cranked out about 20-something products. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. My goodness This guy's a, a, a true avid ham radio operator himself, too. <laughs> That's great. I love his attitude. Jared, I love your attitude, ah. man. You're just excited. You can tell you love what you do. Look at that, go. all lit up, ready to go. Yeah, I got power here now. So, so as you can see, if I, I'm just going to go with the easy one. Yank okay. the fuse, the light goes dead. Mm -hmm. So if your light's dead and the fuse is in that slot, that tells you to replace the fuse. Okay, so that would be, if I'm assuming correctly here, that would be slot four, right? So slot four doesn't work anymore. Just pop a new fuse in and away you go. Is that right? Exactly. Perfect. Wow. So Larry, the fuse is Jared tell you what his degree is in? Jared, what is your degree in? I have a PhD in nuclear physics. He's humble. He hates for me to talk about that. He's, you, you heard the sigh. Did you hear the sigh Jared gave? He's like, that's yeah, he, he, about. he hates for me to talk about that stuff. Nuclear but. physics. Look at this. MFJ 972. Look at this. Ham radio stuff. Okay, I'm missing a knob, but oh well. Yeah, um, it is in the prototype. Today. This is a prototype, guys. So I mean, we we you know we understand <laughs> this is in you know this is right now in preparation for production. This is we're seeing an inside look of things that are to come. Go ahead, please. Okay, so the working description and temporary number, all subject to change later. Uh, the MFJ 972. This is a 150 watt T network tuner. So basically, you can imagine one of our, say, lower power manual tuners with the um, switchable inductor sure. and very capacitors. Instead of being in that container, it's in one of these little Davis boxes. Wow. So the whole thing, you can see there's my fingers, mm -hmm. give you a sense of scale. Pretty small. The whole thing fits in there, and it has a combination SWR watt meter. You can toggle it between functions. It's too small to really fit a cross needle display, so we got to go with this one. Okay. But again, the whole thing is about four by five inches by know, two inches deep. How much do you th yeah. does it weigh, Jared? Give me an idea. Uh, it's a pound and a half, maybe. Oh wow. That's great. So uh, someone on the road, someone that's, you know, working in the field, maybe they've got their rig, they want to do field day or parks on the air. I mean, we got a great comment here from Germany. Listen to this. Delta Kilo 5 Oscar November Victor, the MFJ 972 T network mm -hmm. tuner looks really sweet. Really sweet, guys. That's a nice compliment. That's a, Hey, Jared, did you create that as well? Um, I designed it. Mr. Jew asked me to design it, so... It was his idea. That's but so cool. I got it in the box. Oh, All hey, right. look at look at this now. Okay, for you folks, yeah, we're gonna have to back up for this. For yeah, you Larry, folks, we didn't want to overwhelm you. We just brought a few things in. It's starting to sound like a lot of stuff. Oh boy, he's, he's got more. Oh, this is okay. pretty cool. So this is what we're calling a drive on mount. The the idea is that you um you put and ignore the scribbles we sold us from our production earlier um you put this flat part here on the ground okay and then you park the car tire right on top of it 
Okay. In fact, if, if you, you look, look up this thing, this, this is the MFJ 1912. It's already on sale. If you go look on the website, you'll see a uh, very suspicious blue truck with this thing sitting under one of the tires holding up a, um, I believe it was a 19... 19- 14, no, 19, Larry's got one of those masks. 1915, I think. The, the, the green fiberglass mast. Oh, man, that's like 43 feet know. tall. Yeah, so wow. I, what you can do, on the back side, we have some U-bolts. And uh, you clamp your mast there, uh-huh. put some kind of hook at the top of the mast, and I used a 1982 HP, no, excuse me, 1982 LP in-fed antenna. Okay. Going from a picnic table up to the top of the mast, back down to the other side of my truck, uh, using that with the G90 and the uh, 1204 prototype I just showed you. That's brilliant. I, I was able to uh, work several stations about a month and a half ago at one of our uh, local day in the park events. Wow. That's so, fantastic. I mean, so you put a tire on it to keep it so it'll stay flat. And then yeah, you just hook up your mask to that other side of it and raise it up. That's all you got to do. You can put it anywhere. So parks on the air, islands on the air, summits on the air. If you're running just from your shack or your home, man, you could you could hook that up there. I mean, this is pretty smart right. stuff. Wow. And so just for completion, we put, and this is really too big for this long, but too big. I'll do what I can. We put a bunch of different connectors on the top of this thing. So if you have other antennas you just want to run and you don't care that they're, you know, 18 inches off the ground, you can put them here and go to town. That's an antenna farm right there. That's literally what it is. You can put your extendable mast. You can run a bayonet. You can run a whip. You can run whatever you want to off of that. That's great. Question by Bergsgard. Bergs is in Sweden. Is it made of stainless steel? Yes. Perfect. It's going to handle the elements. Very, That's great. Very, that product is ready to go. It's already on the website, even though it is brand new. So and that's the MFJ 1912, and there it is showing one of the fiberglass masks that's made by MFJ already attached to this device. But it's a smaller yeah. version. It's not showing the long end where you put the tire, so it stays well, in place. This is, a, this is actually a different product. I see. So okay. Is, Sorry. I this stand is a corrected. 19- this is a 1914. Gotcha. And the idea here is that if you're putting up a portable mast and you're guiding it properly, mm-hmm. you don't need a giant base plate. All you need is something to keep the bottom of the mast from skittering around the grass. That's right. Or the yep. dirt. So we have a one foot square stainless steel plate. You got some holes in the corners. You can stake it down, you can put bricks on it. Whatever you need to do just to keep it stationary. And then you let, you let the mast take the weight of the antenna, and you guide the mast to keep it from tipping over. Yes, that's so important. So if you go on the website, we have pictures of this very unit Brilliant. from Field Day this year where we stock a Cushcraft, I think it was a, it was a four-element, Excuse me, it was one of the giant Cushcraft beams. Okay. And, oh, no, no, that was the LFA. Yeah, let, me, the, let me just jump in real quick with you here. What what this will do for you, and I, and I can just, from I see it from my perspective being, you know, working from home or whatever, and wherever you are, you can use it this way. When you get an adjustable mast, you know, they start out four or five feet high, usually about four, and then they start to extend up each section, right? Well, think about it. It has to go somewhere on the ground. Do you dig a hole for it to put it in place so it'll stay stationary? No. You use that product. You can stake that to the ground so it's stationary. And then you make sure the guy wires hold it up straight. What a brilliant product. Because now you don't got to dig a hole or something. You know, it's going to stay in place because it's got a base. Brilliant. That's brilliant. That, you know what? That's a very good idea, guys. Okay. Um, so, so just so, so you know, that, that thing was holding probably 30 pounds of antenna and rotator for field day. Wow. With no problem. With a rotator. That's great. That's fantastic. So you add a rotator 
you add the mast, you add the mass of the antenna, and that device holds it in place on the ground. So that's a brilliant product. Made of stainless steel. That's the MFJ 1914. Is that correct, guys? It is. Yes, sir. 1914. So, folks, if you're looking for something to put that mast in one place and then guy it, remember, one of the places, if you get a guy an antenna, guy it maybe a third of the way, then two-thirds of the way up, or guy it halfway up, and then guy it again, maybe three-quarters up, just to make sure you stay stationary. You're, you're dancing with a big, tall antenna mast. You're just dancing. What else we got, guys? This has been fascinating to see what you're coming up with. And by the way, Jared, thank you for sharing. This is kind of a nice peek, a look inside of MFJ's dreams and what they're coming out with. This is fantastic. Okay, well, my power supply just blew up. Okay, so, okay. Oh, wait, here we go. Richard just grabbed another one. Oh, there you go. One of the nice things about working here is that if I need a power supply, there's usually one available. <laughs> there's always one available. Oh, my gosh. How do you guys get sure, work done? I always be trying to make QSOs. The most I exciting thing we've had in a while. This is uh, something that I showed in Orlando, and people were all excited about it. Of course, that, was no, that one was I must have grabbed a... Uh, okay. Okay. But it's, this is something that has been on Mr. Drew's car for, gosh, Jared, what do you think, six months or so? He okay. still got that on his car. Yeah, yeah. patented design. It, it's going to be really, really something to behold. I'm just it's taking both. a look right now. All we're seeing now is just a workbench with part of a mobile antenna. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a mobile antenna, and he's trying to hook up some power to this. This is the control box for it. Okay. Think Tar Heel, but think smaller and much more economical. Really? Okay. Yes. All right. So just folks okay. that know about Tar Heel antennas. We'll have to go, we'll have to go without power, unfortunately. That's all right. Nothing's, nothing's working right. Um, so basically what this is, let me back away from this so you can get a better idea. So you see, this was the little control box. Okay. Here is the actual antenna. All right. With a little extendable whip on it. Okay. So instead of having a motor-driven coil like you do in a traditional screwdriver, Right. We've basically taken the um, inductor array from an auto tuner and put it inside that black cylinder. And then you use that inductor array together with the innate capacitance of the antenna. Okay. And you basically get a little auto tuner in a tube instead of having a screwdriver driven coil. Okay. The advantage is that you don't have moving parts. You no know, motors to burn out. Everything is controlled by relays. Brilliant. And That's yeah, brilliant. Problem. I can't take credit for this. This has actually been Ben's baby. Okay. I'm actually getting the production for him. This, now, look but, what this is. Just a second, Jared. Okay, this is the brand new MFJ1669. This is mm -hmm. a remote tunable mobile antenna. So if you've got something on your rig or if you've got something you want to hang on, say, I don't know, maybe a deck rail. OK, maybe you're space restricted. Think of this for a second. You're space restricted. You cannot work with an antenna. But if you put one on maybe a deck rail or somewhere that's, you know, you could put it back inside later or whatever, this can get you on the air. It can keep you on the air. How many how many watts can this handle? We're rating this one, I think, for 100 watts. Okay. Um, again, you're dealing with a lot of inductance, especially when you get down to the lower bands. Mm -hmm. So your voltage across your, your voltage drop across those is going to get big. Mm -hmm. um, but this one here is designed for 10 to 60 meters, and we have another version that will be 10 to 40. Perfect. Okay, Maybe good. A couple inches short. So you can go 10 to 40 with one, 10 to 6 with another one. Good. Richard, you're going to say something. What's that? Well, this is not released yet, but Jared's made it 
become very, 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 very close. We are now in production. Uh, we've been talking about this thing since February. That gives you an idea. We showed the prototype in Orlando, but COVID hit. Parts were hard to get. Um, things were just really hard, as sure. you know. I mean, you and I have talked about that. Oh, but gosh, yes. It's, it's been hard to get parts. It's been hard to keep people. It's been hard everything, you know. Sure. So, but it is coming. I promise people. People keep asking me about it that I saw in Orlando, and it's coming. That's brilliant. That is that's something that's coming up the pipeline fairly quickly from MFJ. It's a tunable, essentially a Tar Heel antenna, and you can use it mobily. You can use it at your house to keep you on the air if your antenna restrictions require no antennas. You know, like your HOAs, you know, they're covering you for, hey, no antennas. Well, that'll keep you on the air. That's brilliant. That's hey, Larry, I, I know, I know you're, we're probably limited on time, but we wanted to go take you to a special visitor if you will have us. I would be so honored and thrilled for that. Would you really do that? Yeah, That'd be great. Uh, Mr. Drew definitely wanted to say hello to you. And, oh, man, and what an honor. Thank, thank you. Jared. We thank Jared every day for being here. He really knocks some stuff out of the park. Jared, All thank right. you. We're going to meet, by the way, we've already spoke with today earlier, one of the founders of a company who's Elecraft. We're now going to meet the man who invented MFJ, the man who started the company. Again, think about this. When you start a company, there's a line to cross, okay? You can either be safe and work with somebody else and everything's cool, or you can jump across the line with both feet and hope it works. This is one of the men that jumped across the line, and it did work. This is All a right. very big honor. Very 49 years in 2021. Wow. For hobby company. 49 years in two. Th wow. That's fantastic. What an honor. And the fact he, he's still there. Oh, my gosh, folks. This is an honor. We're going to meet Mr. Jude from MFJ. That's the, this is what MFJ yeah, is. You also see Mike Enos, Larry. He's, he's, he runs Ameritron, but now he's also running uh, MFJ. All right. So in the blue shirt, we have Mike Enos. What an honor. Hello, it's so Hello, nice to meet you. Mr. Jude as well. My goodness, what an honor it is to meet you, sir. Mike, you want to tell them what you do real quick? Well, I uh, yeah. help run the uh, Larry production at MFJ Enterprises and also the uh, production over at Ameritron where we do the linear amplifiers and things. And, uh, what an Just honor. Just things, building and going out the door for the for hams. What an honor it is to meet you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. This means a lot, and it will mean a ton to people down the road as this show will be replayed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir, you're welcome. All right, and over here, we have Mr. Jude. Yeah. Mr. Jude. Nice to meet you, Larry. I'm looking at the camera, so I can't really see you. Uh, Mike was being uh, uh, modest. He actually runs all of the MFK production and the Ameritron production. Here, let me switch the camera around, Larry, so that everybody can see each other. Yes, yes, please, please, yeah, please. This is this is a huge moment, folks. How many times do you get to see this? This is this is Martin. F. Jude. Yeah. This hey, is Larry. Nice to meet you. It's an honor. This is an honor for me, sir, here. to meet Oops. you. It's an honor, sir, to meet uh, you. This is Martin F. Jude. If you ever wonder why it's MFJ, this is the man that started the thing, the whole an American company, American parts, built it here, worked hard to develop the company, and he's still there question something that came up real quick mr jude this is going to be oh. something you'll like this comes from okay. this comes from germany i'll help you out with it this is from delta kilo five oscar november victor he says whoa look at all these shortwave receivers up on the shelf uh, um well i'm i'm going to uh in in a minute ask jared to just kind of pan around to Look at my collection of <clears throat> ham uh, transmitters and receivers that go back 
to the 1950s, 1960s, and I think there may be a few from the late 40s. Wow. Uh, these, these were the uh, novice uh, uh, type of radios that I wish that I had when I was a kid and was not able to afford them, so I just bought them over the years, put them on the shelf, and just so I can look at them. Yeah. That is really cool. That's really cool, man. It is such an honor to meet you. You know, I mean, you, you're one of the guys who, you're one of the guys who's still here and who believes in your company enough to keep it in the United States and work hard to develop more products. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, uh, thank, thanks for having us on your show. And it's very nice to meet you. And, um, He's going to come visit us, Mr. Jim. Oh, yeah. He's coming to Mississippi. Well, you need to come and visit us. We'll roll the red carpet out for you. Bless your heart. Well, bless your heart, man. I mean that. Thank you. It's an honor to meet you. Would you tell us, if you would, a little bit about the history of MFJ, the challenges that you faced, you know, the story of MFJ. Would you mind sharing that with us? This is such a special moment. Um, okay, well, when I was in high school in Hollandale, Mississippi, that's in the Mississippi Delta, in the 10th grade, I had gotten my ham radio license, and let me get Jared to show you a drawing of the little grocery store that I grew up in. <clears throat> yeah, and then he'll bring it back and I'll tell you some more. Yeah, and we have a comment here from Ernest. Ernest, you talked about stuff coming out. We've already covered that. It's earlier in the video. They have a ton of new product stuff that, that's shown earlier. Just rewind the stream, and you'll hear all about their new stuff. It's amazing what they have. Please continue, guys. Thank, thank you, Ernest, for joining us. Thank you. So, here's the uh, drawing he was talking about. Can you all see it? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. And that, that was, was the, the grocery store you grew up in? Yeah, that was the grocery store I grew up in. Look at that. We're, we're, we're and really now, getting harder for my battery, guys. Oh, okay. But we were, um, <clears throat> there were, um, my father died when I was six, seven years old. And there's my, uh, my little brother, my little sister, my mother, and me. And, um. We all lived in the back of the store, and my older sister and her husband and family came to live with us. So um, uh, while we were there, I had got my ham license, and my first ham station was in the attic of the store. So I used to have to climb up into the attic and operate with a uh, home-built uh 22 watt input transmitter made from old TV parts uh, with a regenerative receiver. And um, of course, back then it was all Morse code, crystal control. Um, but uh, that's how I got started in ham radio. But um, when I was uh, about eight years old, I had built a crystal radio and uh, got interested in it. and knew at age eight that I wanted to uh, become an electrical engineer. So, <laughs> okay. Wow. Wow. Well, so, this is such an honor. And then you started the company as well. What year did you start the company? Uh, I started um, it 48 years ago, 1972. Um, I was at Mississippi State University. Um, uh, uh, I had um, uh, gotten a BS degree in electrical engineering there and then went to Georgia Tech to get a master's degree in electrical engineering. I'd come back to Mississippi State to work on a PhD, but I wanted to start a business, so I started making ham products and doing everything by myself. I was in a, rented a hotel room for... Uh, 50 cents a day it was old beat up broken down hotel room and started building everything by myself and just kind of grew from there <laughs> wow wow and then you how long have you been in your current location mr jude oh we've been here since yeah 1994 that's uh 
That's okay. Twenty. Okay, twenty-four years. Is that right? Twenty-five. Twenty. Twenty-six years in this building. Wow. There's four buildings here, four factories here in Starwall. What? Uh, what? Okay. So those factories would be Ameritron, right? One would be Ameritron. What? It'd be Ameritron, High Gain, Cushcraft. MFJ, and then we have Mirage and Vectronics, and then some rotators. Oh, in the metal shop, we have a building that has computer control, punch presses, metal work and stuff, and making our metal cabinets. See, folks, and, um, uh, wow. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, please. Oh, oh no, 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 go, go, go right, right ahead. What I love is that it's from, a, you make it here. I mean, it's developed, it's just, it's made here in America. And that's the most beautiful thing because we're in 2020 in the hopeful end stages of the coronavirus pandemic and they're still making products in America. And that is one of the coolest thing ever. From Germany, big letters, respect with thumbs up. You know what? This is such oh, an honor to meet fair. you. Thank you. Mr. Jude, what was it like for you to take that leap and go into this as a business to not only provide for yourself, but then you had to hire employees. You had to worry about their families and them feeding their families and all of that. Tell us about what that was like to go through that. <clears throat> okay. Well, well, you know, um, I grew up in a grocery store. So we have always been in some kind of a business. And back in those days, you know, that's, that's what people did. They were electricians, they were bricklayers, they were, you know, little business people of their own. So I grew up thinking that everybody was in business. So it was just a natural thing for me. And that's what I wanted to do. I mean, I had gotten a, a degree in electrical engineering, but what I really wanted to do was to start a business, so I had that in mind from the very beginning. That's great. Um, That's great. Yeah. What's, what's your favorite? I have to ask you, because I come from the DX hobby. What's your favorite radio throughout your career? What's your favorite? Some of, some of your favorites. What are some of your favorites? Oh, wow. Well... You know, I've always been a fan of uh, Tentac radios for their CW operations, and one of my favorite radio is the Century 21. I don't know if you know what that is I've never or not, seen but one. that is a okay. That's a direct conversion, huge radio. <clears throat> um, it's a. Um, <clears throat> um, Oh, I think about 50 watts input, and it's analog radio. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but though the Tentac radios, the radio that uh, I'm using now is a 7300, and then I'm using a Flex. Um, but the old transmitter, the heat kit radios, the transmitters, the receivers, um, I mean, what did you think I of the, so far back, people don't even know what those are. Yeah, what did you think of the Drake products? Those are legendary. Drake made some good stuff. <clears throat> they, they they were wonderful products. And the radio that I remember the best was a receiver to Drake 2B, hmm. which was a takeoff on a Collins 74, 70, 74A, no, 75A4. Yep. I forgot what that's called. Oh, no, you're right. Yep. Yep, Collins <clears throat> yeah. made a ton of AM transmitters and FM transmitters for radio stations as well. Yeah, in fact, oh, we've got okay. someone here, Kilo Charlie 4, Victor Kilo, Germany, ham radar operator. He says, I have a Century 21. There you go. Oh. So he's That's watching. Right. Some... Yeah. Very simple radio. I'm, I'm sure, sure he must enjoy that one. one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> indeed. What, uh, Mr. Jude, if you could share... The vision for MFJ, you know, what, what you stand for, for the ham radio community. What would your mission statement or your vision be for people to understand? Well, we would like to provide useful uh, uh, products to the average ham at very affordable prices. 
um, products that will solve little problems for them and uh, let them spend their time operating instead of uh, working to make enough money to buy uh, some of these products. And uh, um, uh, we also like to provide innovative products. Uh, for example, um, back in the old days, before we had SWR meters, we had no way of knowing um, if we were getting power into the antenna. We were using a procedure for trans for tuning the antenna, so dipping and loading and dipping and loading. And it worked pretty well, but you didn't really know if you really were getting power out. And SWR meters were not very common and if you did have one you would have to have a meter and a source of power and you have to take all that stuff out to the antenna and this has been 25 30 years ago we developed the uh, first uh, SWR analyzer that you could take outside and uh, 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 be able to uh, see if you were getting power into your antenna by adjusting it for minimum SWR because, I mean, it's, it's, it's advanced so far now that you can do everything with a portable unit like that, and they're made by people from all over the world, but, but we started that trend in, in the beginning, and and, um, and that, that's the kind of thing that we would like to continue. Make affordable products that solve problems for, for our ham community. Well, thank you, Mr. Jude. I've got one more question for you. It comes okay. from... It looks like, I think this one here comes from Sweden. A question, ask him what he thinks is the best radio today. So what are some of your favorite radios that are made right now? Wow, wow that's, that's a, a tough, tough question. question. <laughs> well, uh, I, I, I can, can say, say that, that the, the radios that, that I have used a lot of are the uh, ICOM radio 7300. And then all, all the other, other radios are all great radios. It, it just, just happens that... that um, uh, we use a lot of the 7300s because uh, Ray Novak, who uh, <coughs> sells and runs uh, the amateur part of ICOM, uh, worked uh, with us for six or seven years in his early career. So he's one of our uh, favorite guys that uh, run radio companies. Very good. And uh, Anders, I'm sorry, it's Norway, not Sweden. I forgot. It's Berg's from Sweden. Anders is in Norway. So, Anders, my, my apologies. Sorry. Mr. Okay, Jude, well, that, what a treat. What a treat to meet you. Wow. Well, well, it's very, very nice. Very nice to meet you. And you're a, a very professional uh, host uh, for the media like this. Mm. You say you say a lot of good things, and I appreciate your kindness to me. That honors me very, very greatly. I, I need to ask a personal question, okay? I come from the okay. short wave. I came from the short wave side. I love DX. That was my thing. Did you ever get into DX radio? Not transmit, not transceivers, but the DX receivers, stuff like the Zenith Transoceanics, or maybe the you know the Sony 2010s, or the you know um, I don't know some of the the latest Texan models or whatever. Did you ever get into that? Absolutely. You know, uh, we Oldhams all got started by listening to shortwave. And my first shortwave radio was a Nikit regenerative receiver, which I still have, that I built when I was uh, in middle school. Uh, and I used to spend evenings, long hours, listening to shortwave stations. And um, um, But, yeah, um, the radios like the old Yezu uh, FR. G7s and the Sony radios and the old Panasonic radios. Mm -hmm. uh, the Texan, I have a Texan radio now. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, but the, the Sony, the, uh, what was that, the 2010? 2010, yeah. yeah. It was an early radio, yeah. yeah. Mid-80s, they sold it to about 2003. Great receiver, just a phenomenal receiver. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Wow, Mr. Well, Jim, um, what a treat. Uh, what a treat. Well, so from a hotel well, room in, to <clears throat> what you have now, from a hotel room to a giant factory that has four different factories in it. What an amazing story. Looking back, final question, looking back, what do you feel your greatest accomplishment has been? Well, to uh, provide jobs for our community over such a long period. You know, in our uh, whole time that we have been here in Starkville, we have never had a layoff. Uh, we have uh, always had jobs during that entire period, and we have had uh, our employees and some of their kids at work, and now some of their grandkids at work here. Wow. So, so I'm, I'm proud of what we have done for our community here. You know what? I And what a great way to end this show, to meet you. This is, this is an honor for me. I hope you know what this means. This is a true honor to me. I bought your products long before I knew Richard or anyone there because I knew that they worked well and I appreciate the fact they were affordable. Um, I like the quality. I think the quality is good. And some people will say it's not good, but I'll tell you this, they will take care of problems. They're very good with customer service. This is something that is important to them because they put their name on it. This guy puts his name on it. So, yeah, from Bahrain, by the way. This is a comment from Bahrain. A real treat to be here live. I recall the George Thois, sorry, Thois MFJ factory tour a few years ago. This is akin to that. Cheers in 73 from Bahrain, Tom. Well, thank, thank you, man. That, that was very nice. nice. Yes, well, well, we, we have, have, we have, have well, this, this is, this is, has been, been fun and it's, uh, been, been a, a real, real pleasure, pleasure talking to you and meeting you. You too, sir. And I hope you come, come see us pretty soon. I would, I would love to do that. Thank you from all of you. Okay, yeah, MJ. Look at the gang I'm behind Mr. G. Okay. I'm, I'm going to talk. I'm, I'm going to ask uh, Jared to do a quick scan, scan so you can, can see the radio. radio. Yes, sure. absolutely. Oh, we'd love that. Thanks, Jared. Look at this. Just a second. What a treat. You can see him above with the speakers. Wow. This has truly been totally unexpected, folks. This is this okay. is really big. Hello. Hello, Richard. Good to see you. <laughs> Look at those. We'll, we'll Look talk. At those. I think Mr. Jude has a collection. Let's put it that way. Wow. Holy cow. That's a collection. Now, is that all of his radios? Or is that just part of the collection? This is huge. Uh, this is just the one in here. Here, he's up here oh, bless your heart. Look at that. Wow. And Larry, if yes, you got sir. a minute or two longer, I'll take you down the hall and show you the K5 MFJ station. Yes, let's take a quick look. I I have two dogs that are probably sitting in a cage wondering where's dad, but I this is important. Let's do it. Walking right. through the hey, MFJ Larry, facility in Startstone, Mississippi. Larry, I'm gonna run and I'll be talking to you. All right, brother. No problem. Thank okay. you. Yeah, yep. This is going through MFJ in Mississippi, courtesy of Richard oh. Stubbs and the gang there. And what a what an honor to meet Mr. Jude himself. If you've ever wondered what MFJ stands for, it's his initials, Martin F. Jude. That was Mr. Jude. Wow. Got okay. some directional so this antennas. Is, this is my cave. <laughs> okay. Look at you this. see, it, it, it looks, looks like a mad science lab because it is. <laughs> so here's the K5 MFJ station that is conveniently located right next to my desk. Oh, um, using a flex. Is that is that yeah. the 6700? That's a, that is Mr. Jew's 6400 that he was kind enough to let us use for the the station. There's a 1306 amplifier. Yes. And a 998 auto tuner. If you ever want to schedule a contact with us, k5mfj at mfjenterprises.com. There you go. There you go. Um, Delta Kilo 5, Oscar November Victor from Germany. This is great. <laughs> love this comment. 
This is funny. He said, I'm wondering how long the shelves going to hold all that weight till they collapse. I'd say they've done a pretty good job holding up all those radios for sure. Wow. You know, it's, it's kind of like the Schrodinger principle. If you don't look too hard at it, yeah. it should stay put. That's right. That's right. Hey, thank you for allowing us to visit with Mr. Jude. You know, I think of every show I've ever done, this one means the very most, no question, because we had that opportunity. I mean that. Folks, if you watch us on replay, the only thing I ask is please subscribe. If there's one thing you notice, now this video is now one hour, 20 minutes long. You're not going to see one commercial throughout this whole presentation. There wasn't one ad because I don't monetize the channel. This is here to help people learn ham radio and to get their shacks better, to help you make better ham radio stations really work. You know, eliminate your RFI issues with something like the MFJ 1026. Help to tune your antenna if you've got a mismatch with like the 939 or the 998 if you're running power to help you to, you know, get some strong antennas like a maybe a nine band vertical, like an AV680 high gain. You know, this is about learning a lot, but that opportunity to meet with Mr. Jude, that's historic. The 40, 49 years, is that it? 49? I see, yeah, I think so. Wow, what an honor. All right. You know, Jared, I better cut y'all loose. Thank you for the opportunity for, for all of this. This this is going to be a very big watched show. And I want to thank all the people at MFJ for letting it happen, for all of your help to me personally, and to helping all the ham radio community all over the world. Thank you for what you do. You know, you may go home and say, what a day. But you know what? There are a lot of people around the world who are getting boxes in the mail today who are really excited to open those boxes and make their shack better because of what you do. Don't ever forget that, buddy, okay? Thanks. You're welcome. Folks, we have been live with MFJ in Mississippi and got a lot more than we expected. That was very special. Any final words, my friend, to share with the folks? No, everybody, have a good night, and thanks for letting us uh, show off some of our new toys. And uh, as always, you got a question, call up the factory and ask. Somebody will talk to you. There you go. That was Jared from MFJ, good man, and we are truly honored. All the way from here to the Pacific Northwest to Germany, we thank you very much. I'll be right there. Hang on a second, my friend. No, you're running late. Just a moment. Folks, that has been... A historic and unexpected tour of MFJ, including meeting Mr. He Jude himself, Mr. Jude himself. That is, wow, this is pretty bad. Mr. Jude himself, that was Martin F. Jude. He helped start that company a long time ago. And you think about it, he started it in a hotel room, 50 cents a day. Think about that, 50 cents a day. And then he keeps going and he builds it up. And what's one of his, oh, this is terrible lighting all of a sudden. It's because of the, you know, we've, now we're going, the sun's going down. So everything goes, yeah. Anyway, started at 50 cents a day in a hotel room, built a huge company. That was a special show. And I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. We'll be back tomorrow with CQ Calling. It will be up above 7175 for generals and technicians, sorry, generals and amateur extras. To take part in the call. It will be doing nothing but CQs for as long as we can run. Join us tomorrow. That's going to be starting new time, by the way. That's at 5 p.m. Pacific. 5 p.m. Pacific translates eight hours. So that's 1 a.m. UTC on Saturday. Thanks for watching, everybody. Until next time, Gunter puts it back. So does Bergs from Sweden. So, wow. Just the, li the list goes up from, you know, people in Bahrain and all over the world. Thank you, and God bless you. Good night, everybody.